Today's little rewilding katakwa is about two related concepts. They are philosophical and they are economic. And they are futile trade-offs and false dichotomies. So a futile trade-off is when you say, well, if we protect more nature, we will destroy more jobs. We'll just let these people pass. And a false dichotomy is very much related in are we going to have jobs or are we going to have wildlife? Are children going to be in poverty? Are people in the third world going to starve? Or are we going to save nature? Now, current economic thinking would have us believe that that is the case. While when we really analyse things, that is not the case. Or it doesn't have to be the case. Now, I came across these two concepts from the amazing Mason Gaffney, who is an economist. He was at uh, the University of California. And he is a natural resource economist. And I met him through the wonderful uh, economic commentator, Fred Harrison, who I would heartily recommend you read one of his books, or Mason's own books, which some are freely available online. And their, their book, The Corruption of Economics, is the first text any rewilder needs to read before trying to understand the problems of economics. Now, we are surrounded all the time by politicians and their advisors telling them that these are these false dichotomies and futile trade-offs. And the first one is, if we start rewilding, we won't have enough food. And that's really important because food is important. And we don't want to starve. But when we actually burrow into the subject, we find out that there is absolutely tons of land that produces virtually no food. In fact, about 40% of the land surface of the UK only produces about half the percent, in fact, it's less than half a percent, of the calories we consume. So there's lots of land on useless golf courses, on uh, hunting estates, uh, grouse moors, on sheep uh, hills, which is basically useless to our eating and our economy. Yet that is taking all the land that could be rewilded. And we can also look at this, this false dichotomy in the economic sense where we start losing absolutely tons of money when we tax people's wages. Taxing people's wages is insane. It destroys jobs. But if we decrease, so decreasing taxes would give us more jobs, you would have thought. Well, no, not really. Because under our current economic conditions, if we reduce taxes on jobs, we don't actually create more jobs. We don't actually raise income levels. All we do is increase rent. The rent people have to pay to access locations for business and for their homes or the cost of buying a house. And this is a fundamental issue. It's the Henry George argument. It's the issue that we will always have poverty when we have progress because no matter how much money we make, no matter how much nature we destroy and put into our economy, how much pollution we create in so-called economic progress, all that happens is monopolies increase in value and we have to pay more. So poor people don't get any richer. And this is the core of understanding economics. We can create an economy that will benefit us 
without actually creating poverty. So the idea that people can have nature and have a world that sucks carbon back into the ground is perfectly viable economically. And any economist or politicians who tells us that's not the true, it's because they don't understand the role of economic rent within our economy. And any rewilder, any person trying to save nature, if they don't have an understanding of the concept of economic rent, and mostly we're talking about land rent, and how that goes up and down, they're never going to be able to save wildlife. Because if we give more wildlife to, if we give more money to wildlife organizations, all that's happening is the nature reserves that they're going to buy is going to go up in price. And I've seen that over my time. In fact, um, woodland has gone up over 40% in the time I've been working in the wildlife conservation business. So we've got to get back to this idea of economic rent and futile trade-offs and these false dichotomies we're presented with is fundamentally, philosophically and economically flawed. And if we don't understand that, we would never be able to find out what the policies are, not the ridiculous schemes of rewilding and conservation that are just managerial and don't actually make much difference that we're doing at the moment. But if we're ever going to really, really rewild our country, have more nature, stop the destruction of nature, and we don't have to impoverish human beings because all that's going to happen is ridiculous land prices are going to go down, not people get poorer. Of course, the rich and the people who benefit from economic rent, people who make the decisions and own most of stuff, they're going to get poorer. And I've got no problem with that. And I don't think you should either. So there we go. False dichotomies, futile trade-offs. Never be get caught in that intellectual trap that you are going to hurt humanity, that people are going to starve if we start rewilding.